I've just climbed up the ladder onto the roof and here it is three three sunroofs look at that right the next job on the list involves water and a ladder right so long story I want to put two more sunroofs up here one here and then one up there where that round thing is now the reason being you can put them in these three locations on a long wheelbase sprinter and that's because the ribs are flattened here so you can you've got a flat surface to work with just like on that one if you notice that one there's no mastic or sealant or gunk of any kind trying to seal it up what you'll find with a lot of camper conversions is people are trying to put these big uh, roof lights and they're going over these ribs and then they have to try and fill the gap but I found these Wybasto Hollandia 100 sunroofs and uh, they fit a treat the only problem is a few years ago when I sprayed this van I didn't spray the roof and I didn't mask up the roof so consequently the overspray came down settled on a dirty roof so this roof already had algae you know um, muck off the road sea salt, uh, road salt all that kind of thing on it and then the spray came down and just landed on it and set it in so it's all rough and nasty so I'm trying on different ways of uh, cleaning it up and the best solution I've come up with is wire wool and water As you can see it works, brings it up nice, but there's a lot of hard work involved. So I'll catch up with you when I've finished. Well, it's uh, coming, coming along nicely, as you can see. It's taken quite a while, so I'm going to take a rest now, have another go tomorrow. See the bit in the middle there which I left, that's because it's going to be cut out anyway when the sunroof goes in. Well it's taken a couple of afternoons but we're nearly there. There's a lot of elbow grease and it's just one of these and a water. Who's that? Teddy! Don't drink the dirty water! Teddy! Don't drink it! So what you'll get is a box like this and inside inside are all these bits importantly you'll get a template which is in cunning, cunningly disguised as the instructions as well so the first thing you do is cut around the dotted line And you 
end up with this which is the template that you cut out on the roof we're up on the roof it's very windy as you can see by the bushes I've been trying to I've been waiting about five days for the wind to drop and it hasn't so I'm gonna persevere and carry on anyway um, right this is a scan of the roof obviously we've got that one fitted already I did that one about 18 months ago but we want to put one here and we want to put one at that end as well so this is the area um, I've, I've mentioned it before it's ideal because it's where the ribs um, stop so you, there's a nice flat area I'll only put these on flat areas so um, it should fit there Now this is the template and it's got an arrow so the arrow points towards the front of the vehicle so always get it around that way so we need to do now is position it correctly um, central basically by measuring obviously the gaps at each side you know using a tape measure so get a gap here, get a gap at that end, and line them up so they're exactly right. So yeah, gap here. Oop. Yeah, we're really windy today. And then you mask it down, and then draw around it, just using a uh, marker. I'm going to put you down for a bit, and uh, so I can use both hands. Realised uh, a quick way of working out your centre. Um, just here on the template is the center that line there and obviously the center rib on your roof is going to be the middle so if you line those two up together there's a good chance you're going to be in the middle there is a problem because you can't put the template flat because of the ribs obviously underneath here now I'm going to actually cut um, a hole I'm going to fill the rib where it is which is there and then I'm going to cut uh, a, re a relief line I'm going to call it Probably put a little, um, probably put a little uh, bit in the end, only because it looks good, but it might be effective at expanding it. Yeah, I think that works. Yes, yeah, it's gonna work. Oh, yeah, cool. So then just Tape, tape it down a bit more around in, around along here as you go along and oh yeah I like that a bit spooky and that's each rib that you need to cut out like this one is dead in the center of these um, frames so like it's dead in the center of that one oh, where are we dead in the centre of that one it's dead in the centre of this one so it gives you a little bit more help as well when you're cutting this you can just cut straight down that line straight down the middle of those frames yeah, this actually works and if you cut you cut a slit to start with but then just 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 get confident and just cut all the way around it and then it fits lovely and flat then completely flat and then you can get your pen and mark around it here it is it's all stuck down all I've got to do now is put the black line around it it's all flat oops ish no it's all flat all nice and flat and all it's definitely centralized as well 
definitely centralised there on, onto that one, so that's as good as it's going to get. It's only me that's got to look at it anyway. managed to make a black line all the way around it relatively tidily I wanted to save this template actually in case somebody needed one but I have got another one because I've got you get one in each box so. but ideally I could just use this one again save everything to faff around cutting in another one out you have to forgive the camera work but I'm perched up a ladder and it's very windy and I'm trying to do it one-handed and hold the camera with the other so I'm just gonna let that go right so that's what you're left with hopefully uh, I think the easy part will be cutting it out that was that was hard work that was or well, I made it look hard anyway right so this one is slightly different because it's got a big round bit in the middle oh that's right I'll turn it around so that's at the front it's the arrows there look so the arrows point to the front oh come on give me a break I've just been working all bloody day got up at six o'clock this morning Come on! I just want to go in, have my tea. Right, lay there for a minute. Oh, look, we can get a reference off of that, so that's good. There we go. When I was cutting this, I just heard somebody say, "Oh, but what about the..." What about the paintwork? It's going to cut the paintwork and then it's going to rust. This is the bit that's going to be thrown away. So don't worry about it. Right, this is the one at the front done. It's all taped down. All I've got to do now is get the black pen out. I've driven... I've driven? I haven't driven anywhere. I've drawn the line around this one. and there you go now I'm not gonna lie to you this looks very close to these ribs doesn't it now I've not done this before obviously so we'll see how it goes but you know that the cut line is right there at the bottom of the ribs and then of course there's a uh, flange to go over it really I don't know whether it's going to work. I don't even know whether it's worth cutting it. I'm going to ponder overnight and then decide in the morning whether to cut this or not. Okay, first thing to do is put a hole in it. On the inside of the line, obviously. And then you get your jigsaw with a steel blade in or metal cutting blade and you pop him in there like that and then cut all the way around once you've started cutting you can get your partner friend mother cat whoever to come inside and put duct tape over the bit that um, you've cut it just supports the whole piece of metal that you're cutting out and stops it from just 
sagging into the inside of the van and making your cut worse so yeah get that taped up it's a nice tape on there just to support it okay so we're getting there just take your time with it really right so uh, nothing new here on your jagged edges just um, clean them all off with a file and then paint them over now I didn't really see the importance of painting the cut edge when I did the first one I thought oh, I'll be all right it's all covered up anyway so I didn't bother painting it you know with a little paintbrush and some primer but if you don't this is what happens just there I don't know if you can see that it's bubbling up it's gone rusty there and that's obviously because it started getting rusty on the edge and it's worked its way back so now I've got to take this sunroof out and treat this this um incidentally I'm I'm pretty disappointed with the uh, with this uh, sun with this brand of sunroof um, because look I mean this has only been in here this has only been in here you know 18 months something like that and all the paints come off the uh, frame look at that that's not very good is it it's coming off there as well and it's yeah you can see it's all it's all pitted it's all coming it's all it's, it's all going to end up coming off it's all it's all pitted and come or to be honest though I'm actually quite a lazy person and uh, I prefer to let Mr. Makita do all the hard work. Okay, I've just popped it in. I've finished up, finished cleaning all the edges, the jagged edge all the way around um, with a flappy disc on my grinder. That didn't take a couple of seconds and I've just uh, popped it in see whether it fits and it's a lovely snug fit very nice perfect and uh, this is what I'm going to be looking forward to because the bed the bed is going to be right here where I'm standing and I'm going to be able to lie in bed and look up at the sky in the morning all the stars at night and uh, and you can even take it out because these sunroofs the glass comes out completely so you can lie there looking up at the sun in the morning without any um, glass in the way you can even stand on the bed and get up onto the roof or uh, just stand on the bed and look out bird's eye view and just in case you didn't believe me here we are Let's talk about the ceiling and how this seals. So Webasto have designed this with a compression seal. But what that means is they use two pieces, two items which are compressed together using screws, lots of screws all the way around, and it clamps them together. And that is the seal. Now they've designed this in a way that you do not need any liquid gaskets. You don't need any sealant, any cork, any Sikaflex, you don't need anything else. This works perfectly well with this design. Why best I don't stipulate that you use any sealant, they don't want you to use sealant. There's nothing in the instructions that says use any any sealant. So I put that other one in 18 months ago. Uh, the same process as this no sealants whatsoever and it hasn't leaked at all so what you get with this is the
the various components of the sealing the various components of the sealing process are this rubber gasket and this foam self adhesive tape so one of these it's difficult to do this one handed obviously but this tape you take the backing off of there and you stick that all the way around the edge of there and this goes all the way around this and then you put the two together and they clamp down with the bolts that go through here and that is your seal now what you'll find when you're putting this all the way around is there'll be extra now you let it you overlap it you don't cut it off so it's it's level um, I've seen somebody else cut that off and so it's level there and then they've tried to super glue in it and the idea is that you actually overlap it by at least five mil that's in the instructions okay and the reason you do that is once it's all in place and it's being bolted down it stretches and if you've cut it to exactly the same size it'll stretch and even gluing it with super glue if that super glue doesn't hold actually super glue will probably just melt that to be honest but if that that will just come apart and that's when you'll get water ingress so overlap it guys by at least five mil okay So here we are, we've done it all the way around and they, they, they leave a little bit of a, an overlap there. So just trim that off five mil over. There we are. Right, so what you want now is your, uh, the other piece. I don't know what it's technically called, but that's the other piece and your rubber gasket. Now you just run that all the way around pop it on all the way around here all the way around and do the same thing overlap it slightly five mil so this is simple it just slides on all the way around you don't need to glue it or stick a flex it or anything just pop it on all the way around And here we are, we've put it on, sorry about the shadow, it's just that time of day again. Um, yep, so here we go, we've put it on all the way around and here's the join. So I'm gonna cut it here, five mil over, maybe a little bit more, five to 10 mil, and pop it over the top of that one. And there it is. So I've popped the sunroof in and now I've got to offer up the backing plate. I'm going to call it a backing plate now, that other plastic piece. This piece here, that's, that's the backing plate. Uh, if you're wondering what that is, it's a bucket of water. I've just put it up there to to hold the sunroof down evenly while I put all the bolts in. This is actually really fiddly. So another little trick, which I've only just realized, because you're trying to hold the whole thing up um, with your hands and trying to get the first bolt in, um, if you undo this handle, you put the what do we what do we decide to call this the back plate on and then you put the handle back over and that will hold it there so then that gives you an extra pair of hands really holding that side so then you only have to hold one side what I didn't mention is these are um, thread tapping set screws so 
you need a bit of force really to set them off. So I'm using a torque wrench just to start them off. Just a few turns just to get them in and then I'll finish them off with a ratchet. So it's good to do a cross pattern when you're tightening them all up. Yeah, when you're um, bolting the cylinder head back down, you do that in sequence as well. Kind of gives it an even clamp all the way across. So do one this side, do one that side, do one this side, do one that side. Until they're all nice and snug. Right, um, you know I mentioned yesterday that I wasn't sure now whether I was going to cut out that first um, sunroof because of the there wasn't a lot of um, space there to to cut it out and also put the trim in because these it was going to be so close to these ribs um, I think the line comes to about there where I've got to cut it and then obviously you've got the the flange of the sunroof that got to go in which would have which would have been gone over this interfered with this um, rib pressing and it would have left it left it slightly high um, so you wouldn't have got a good seal so I was contemplating whether to do it or not go ahead with it but I've decided now I am going to do it um, simply because on this piece which is obviously the one I've just cut out um, I've played around with it I've played around with it and I can actually flatten this pressing without doing it any damage at all. You can see here where this pressing was, well it was the same as this one, it was it came out to here. Uh, and I flattened it completely. So that's what I'm gonna do with the one on the roof. It's gonna be a bit harder because I put this in um in my vise on my bench and then basically just closed the closed the vise up and it flattened it, crushed it. Um, so it's gonna be a bit more difficult up on the roof. But um, yeah, I'm going to give it a go anyway. I might as well, I've got the sunroof now, so. I really would like some light coming in at the front there. So uh, yeah, we're going to do this. Let's do it. So that's the two we've got in now. And then uh, obviously I want one here. So uh, just up there. So the orange uh, foamy, the one with the orange backing, the foamy one, that's on the that's on the the roof side, and that's that's resting down on the roof. And then um, this here is the rubber one, uh, and that's pushing up against the roof this way. So they they are clamping, but they're clamping with the with this roof in between them, and which is making the seal. Alright, so we're back on the roof and uh, I'm going to take the bull by the horns. Actually, never take a bull by the horns. It's just metaphorical. But, let's go for it. Stage done, it's all cut out. The reason why it hasn't dropped through is because I I taped um, duct tape underneath to support it so it didn't sag in one place when I was cutting it. Hello sunshine. Well we're making progress. And don't forget to hoover up all the bits of metal filings because they turn quickly into rust. boxed one um, there's a template on the outside and that's for the headlining as you can see it says headlining template so this is for cars and so this is for doing on the inside of the headlining in a car so ignore that one right this is the other head this is the other template so this is the template that you do use 
and um, this is the one you saw me using earlier and this has also got instructions on it pretty basic instructions but they're all there including the uh, the overlapping the seal there by 5 to 10 mil you don't cut it off you overlap it and there we have a lovely brand new sunroof so I've just popped the new sunroof in the hole and I'm really actually pleased with the way it's sitting I mean these are the ribs that I'm worried about and if you run your finger along there there's actually no gap um, oh, there's a little gap there yeah there's a little gap on that one yeah I think it was the middle one actually that was protruding longer than the, the, the two outer ones so they're not a problem there's a slight gap under there on that one these ones at the back kind of similar now the way these these clamp do you know I don't know whether that's even going to affect it so what I'm going to do and the beauty of the this design this compression clamp design is you can take it out as many times as you want so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble it bolt it all up and if we get a leak then I'll just take it apart again and I'll adjust I'll sort these out these ribs I'll, I'll flatten them down but you know, there's no point in fixing something that's not broken, so let's just see. So we're just putting these bolts in. It's so much easier with a torque driver, but it, it doesn't really matter if you haven't got one. Well, it rained quite heavy last night, and I've just come out this morning. And as you can see, all the water is still sitting on the glass, but it's bone dry. Absolutely no ingress of water at all. So that's really good news. And the other one, all three of them. And that one. See the water sitting on. I think we'll call that a success. So uh, anyway, that's how I fitted my Besto Hollandia 100 sunroofs in my Mercedes Sprinter. Three of them fit without having to compromise on the seal because this is all on flat surfaces. You don't have to cut any ribs, you don't have to seal it over ribs, you don't have to use any mastic. You only use the compression sealing kit that comes with it and nothing else. Thanks for watching.